Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So today I decided let's take a break from doing benchmarks and instead I just want to have a chat with you guys. And this chat relates to AMD specifically because I think that they're in bigger trouble than most people seem to realize. And this is mostly due to the fact that we're getting a lot of new information about Intel both in graphics and in CPUs. And I really think that this is going to be a huge shift in the market just like when Ryzen came out a few years ago. So I wanted to talk to you guys here today about that. Um, Paul and I just recorded the Next Technomics podcast, and that seemed to be the main theme. But in that one, I was kind of going through my thoughts as we were talking. I wanted to just talk to you guys in a more concise manner, and I wanted to get your feedback on the situation because I think if things continue to go in the direction that they have been, and AMD doesn't completely do a 180 on their marketing... I really do think that Intel might throw them out of both CPU and discrete graphics within the next few years. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about here today. Are you in need of a Windows 10 key for your new PC build? Well, today's sponsor, CDK Deals, has the deal for you. They offer great prices on games, software, and of course, Windows 10 keys. Just search for Windows 10 and you get an awesome price on this Windows 10 key. And for a limited time, you can get an even better deal by typing in GOG25 in the promo code for 25% off. Checkout is super easy with secure payments with credit card or even PayPal to make things as simple as possible. After payment is complete, all you have to do is just click on your key, click the Get Key button. There you go. You can also check your email for your brand new key. Now, to activate Windows 10, all you have to do is go to search, type in Activation Settings, and go ahead and just go ahead and change key. And that's it. It's that simple. So now's the time to take advantage of this exclusive offer and get that extra 25% off by clicking the links down below and using GOG25 as the promo code. Now back to the video. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Chris, how can Intel just come in here and throw out AMD? AMD is doing very well on the CPU side of things. They're doing very well on the discrete graphics side of things. They have a very competitive architecture with uh, NVIDIA, obviously Intel is not going to be competing on the high end. How, how could they possibly come in here and do this? And honestly, the CPU benchmark testing that I've done is really what kind of got me to this point. If you guys haven't seen those videos, a lot of it is focused on the Intel Core i3-10100. And this CPU right now, the 10100F, doesn't have the iGPU, is coming in at $98.80. And this CPU could run all of today's modern AAA games, the single player ones anyway that I've tested, just fine, no problem. So this is a sub $100 CPU. Now here's the thing, AMD simply does not offer anything in this category. Intel, even this year, refreshed the lineup, gives you another 100 megahertz, but it costs a little bit more. The 10105F, it's a little bit more expensive. Honestly, you'd be better off saving the money and just getting the 10100 while they're still in stock. These will obviously be out of stock soon, and then you can get the 10105 probably this holiday season for the same price as this, as it will slot into this category. But if we take a look at what the AMD competitor to something like this is, that would be the Ryzen 3100. And honestly, those are not in stock here on Amazon, which is probably the largest store on the planet, if you want to be honest about this. So not available whatsoever, or the 3300X also unavailable. Jumping on over to Newegg, they do have them in stock, coming in at $259 for the Ryzen 3 3100. Or funny enough, the 3300X coming in at $239. So obviously this would be the smarter way to go, but neither one is worth it at these price points. Now we're talking about Zen 2 based products, things that came out back in 2019, I believe, maybe early 2020. I know these came out a little bit later, but we're talking about entry level CPUs or mainstream level CPUs. Anything between the one and $200 price point, that's your mainstream. That's where the most people are going to spend their money on CPUs for gaming PCs. AMD has zero options in that particular category. Jumping back over to Amazon, I decided, let's see where the Ryzen 3600, because I know there's going to be somebody going, well, Ryzen 3600 is in that price point. Uh, no, it's not. That's $289, so this is basically worthless. Jumping back over to Newegg, $267, $268. So, yeah, definitely not sub-$200 there. 
And we know that there's no 5,000 series CPUs in that price category, nor was there supposed to be. And this is a real issue if you guys think about it. There's only one option in the mainstream category offering anything at mainstream prices. And that's going to be Intel. Uh, they will obviously come out with a 12 series CPU to fit into these slots, into these existing price points that they used to have. There will be an i3 on the 12 series of CPUs. And yeah, it might be a little bit more. So we might not see them at $100, but maybe they'll be like 120 which is what they normally launch at for the i3s. Personally, I think Intel will bump prices up about 10% over what they launched Rocket Lake at across the board, which does make some sense because these are more powerful and AMD simply isn't competing. So this is just a wide open goal for Intel to be like, hey guys, we have an option for you. And if Alder Lake is as powerful as we think it's going to be, so worst case scenario, we think it's going to be at least on par with the Zen 3 V cache in terms of IPC and clock speed should be relatively similar. So if they're the only ones offering a CPU within that one to $200 price point that will play every game that you could possibly want to with it, why wouldn't you buy an Intel CPU? Now, a lot of people will say, well, their motherboards are too expensive. At least here in the US, that's not the case. They're relatively the same to AMD. Yes, both companies have like five or $600 motherboards, but most of them have like 50, 60, 70, $80 entry level options. And if you're buying a $100 CPU, a 50, 60 to $80 motherboard, makes a lot of sense. Um, now, granted, you're not going to get all the features and things like that. And that, that's that's a personal choice. Buying a motherboard is a personal choice because you might have different use cases. But overall, what I'm saying is, is at least here in the US, you will have options. And I would assume across most of the world, you probably will. There will obviously be some people out there that maybe AMD is cheaper than Intel just because they get, you know, better rates from AMD. But ultimately, the point is, is this is a market that Intel is looking to serve and AMD is completely ignoring. The 3100 and 3300X, the 3300X sold out almost immediately because it was a great value when it came out, and they just never really seriously replenish that stock. Now, it makes sense. They don't want to cut down an 8-core 16-thread all the way down to 4-core 8-thread. There is almost no instances where the die is that damaged to where it needs to do that. So it was mostly just to move extra silicon, but if they're selling Ryzen 3600s or 5600s or whatever, instead of these low-end chips, why would they ever do that? That's a good point. But Intel is the company that's like, well, we still want those sales. And they'll actually go ahead and offer products to people. Now, this is also likely going to translate over into the graphics card market. You've heard myself and Paul and a bunch of other people basically say that AMD is ditching their base, which was the RX 580 owner, RX 570 owners out there, uh, 470, 570s, you know, the Polaris generation people, uh, between that $150 and $250 price point. Granted, things are more expensive today, and you can kind of push that price point up to, let's say, the two to $300 price point. That'd be fair. Things cost more, shipping costs more. I'm okay with that. Paying, you know, maybe a 20, 25% premium over what we did five years ago. But there's nothing from AMD in this particular category. Now, you could argue that NVIDIA also isn't catering to that class, but NVIDIA is the premium brand. They are the guys that sell the top tier stuff. They always have been. That's kind of their shtick. They do the high end, crazy, stupid price things that don't make a whole lot of sense. That's fine, and people want to do that. You know, that's where you go. AMD was always the more thinking man's GPU. You know, it's like, well, they're going to give me 90% of the performance for 75% the price. I'm going to go that route. Maybe you lose out on a couple of features that don't matter that much to you. That's always kind of been the trade off. AMD is the budget brand. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. In GPU, they still definitely are the budget brand. They are they do not have performance parity. They do not have feature parity with NVIDIA. So this generation, they decided we're not going to be the budget brand with nothing to back it up. Now, personally, I wouldn't care if they wanted to charge $2,000 for the 6900 XT, so long as, let's say, something like the 6600 XT was like, I don't know, $300, and then you had another card a little bit slower. I don't know, somewhere is around a Vega 64 level at about $250. I wouldn't be complaining. I don't care what they do at the high end. That's, you know, just marketing versus marketing. See how much money you can make off of people. 
but they completely ignored anybody who bought a Polaris card off of them because the NVIDIA options right now just make more sense considering they're priced about the same. So yes, an AMD card uh, like the 6600 XT is about $500 real world if you want to get one. And if you want to get something like an RTX 3060, also about $500. The 6600 XT is faster, the 3060 has more RAM and better features. So yeah, they should be priced about the same. So you're, you're getting more here or less there and vice versa. So those cards are actually competitors when you really think about it. Now jumping on over to this leak slide from DG2, this is the most important part to me. I don't really care that they'll have something that's gonna be competing with something like a 6700 XT or 3070. A lot of you guys are, you're like, yeah, that's great. That doesn't matter. We already have 3070s and 6700 XTs. These are like eight, $900, these are like $1,000. So whatever this comes out at, it'll probably be like seven to $800 if you know it's right in line with these guys. Same thing with whatever comes out lower than it. This is the category that matters. This is the die that, that's gonna be the big deal because there's nothing and nothing. This is a completely unserved market. This is a completely open goal. Just like what I said with the one to $200 CPU market. It's a completely open goal. And we're talking about the biggest guy in this sector. Intel is the largest company of these three. So they're gonna be the ones taking up all of these sales in this market. So. Basically what Intel's leaked slide is telling us, this, it might be difficult to see, but this has a GTX 1650 Super, which is basically an RX 580 uh, or GTX 1060 six gig in performance. I had one uh, and that's exactly where it landed and it came in at $159. That's how much I paid for mine. So they're gonna be targeting basically that level performance, RX 580 level performance at 75 watts, no less, which is awesome, which for smaller form factor builds or people that just, want to have the most efficient build possible, this is going to be the best and most efficient uh, GPU on the market. Um, so they'll basically be offering RX 580 level card. I would assume that they're gonna price it somewhere around 159. So this is gonna kind of suck. A lot of people are like, man, why are these cards still $200? Well, they're going for $400 on eBay right now, RX 580, eight gigs. So if this thing has eight gigabytes of RAM and they're selling it for let's say 160 to 200 bucks, in reality, that's actually gonna help a lot of people out. And for most people, that's all they need for 1080p gaming. And then according to this, they're actually gonna go all the way down to the mainstream segment, which is 100 to $149. So let's say you get, I don't know, RX 570 level performance or something like a GTX 1060 uh, three gig for under $150. This is gonna be plenty for most people out there. I'm assuming that that would just be a four gig card, likely the 96 EU variant. And realistically, if they offer something sub $150 and you can go to the store and it's actually sub $150 because maybe it's too weak for mining or something, this is actually going to be the GPU that most people are gonna recommend you buy and wait out the crisis, even if you want a high-end card. They, most people will be recommending these cards here over 6900s and 3090s and the rest of these cards as they're massively overpriced. And that's huge when you think about it. You know, there's two major open goals that AMD specifically is just leaving wide open because typically that entry level GPU segment, that's their baby. That's what they cater to. They offer better performance, more RAM, just overall better products in those price points compared to Nvidia. And then the CPU market, they just said, nah. Nah, $250 plus is kind of where they want to be. And granted, I get it, you know, if I could charge, you know, $100 for everybody who watched my videos, you know, that'd be wonderful. You know, I'd be making way more money, but you know, that's just not the state of the market. I can't do that. I understand that I can't get away with that. AMD seems to think that they can. They figure, let's just see what happens. And unfortunately, they've hurt their brands and their images so much at this point that I think Intel is just going to walk in and just take the cake on, on both segments. So AMD can fix this, of course. They can just drop prices and be more aggressive. But this is also going to tick off a lot of people that bought their products. Let's say you did spend $450 on a 5800X and then Intel comes out with a product and now it's 250 for a 5800X because they need to price it there to be competitive against uh, Intel. You know, some people be like, well, you got a year out of it, but let's say you bought it just last week. You did not get a year out of it and you just lost $200, almost 50% of your value within like a month or two. 
that's going to upset a lot of people. And yeah, sometimes that's the breaks, but this is not going to leave a good taste in these people's mouth. So this is prob this is one of the reasons why you have to manage your stacks better. This is the main reason why Paul and I really railed on AMD for raising prices with Zen 3, because it just seemed so tone deaf. Raising prices a little bit, okay. Raising prices uh, $50 on your, basically your entry level chips made zero sense when you're raising the same amount on your high end stuff. You know, if you raise 50 bucks on your $700 CPU, you shouldn't be raising $50 on your $250 CPU. You should raise like 10, maybe 15. And then it would have been fine and nobody would have cared. And then you could slide down prices gradually. And then it's not like huge price cuts. So to sum all this up, I, I think AMD is in trouble because I personally don't like what they're doing. I haven't liked what they've been doing for a while now. And personally, I have no interest in any of their products anymore because of this. I, I just can't recommend anything that they do at this point in time. So to me, they're basically already an irrelevant company. And I typically look at things a few months or a few years ahead of the average curve. And realistically, if I'm starting to feel this without a dramatic change in their policy, uh, I, I just think that Intel is going to be like, hey, we're going to take all that business and, you know, thanks. And catering to those markets, that's going to be the majority of PC gamers. The overwhelming majority, like 85 plus percent of people are going to buy a one to two hundred dollar GPU and a one to two hundred dollar CPU. Now, I know a lot of people watching this, you're like, I spend all this money. Well, you're in a supreme minority. Most people don't want to do that. And everybody who does already has, you know, people that are like, ah, oh, you know, I'll spend a thousand dollars on a graphics card. I mean, we're talking about fractions of a percent. Um, you're talking about millions upon millions of people that'll spend $150 on a graphics card. And honestly, like I said, most of the reviewers out there will likely recommend you buy these, even if you want a high end card to just wait out this awful sort of thing that we're in and wait till next generation. And you know, you'll be good to go. So these are going to be the cards that everybody's going to recommend for almost every use case. And this is honestly AMD's bread and butter when it comes to GPU. And they they just left it open. Uh, NVIDIA is doing fine, obviously. NVIDIA would like to have these sales, but realistically, they'd rather have the high-end stuff. And that makes sense for them to cater to that market. For AMD, it makes zero sense to cater to the high-end market. Yes, you're making more money today, but you're losing customers hand over fist. You're losing faith in the customer base or the customer base is losing faith in you rather. And eventually you're just not going to have sales. So congratulations, you've screwed yourself over. Smart move would be is drop $100 off every single Zen 3 CPU right now. All, also off the discounted prices. Like you want a 5600 or a 5600X sub $200 today. Like I don't see AMD doing that because they're not smart enough to recognize that that's what they need to do to steal the majority of the market. But if they did that in a 5800X sub $300, uh, if they did that, you know, nobody's going to care about Alder Lake. They're just going to go out and buy Zen 3 instead. But once again, AMD is not smart enough to figure out how to do this. And uh, Intel is going to kick them in the pants. That's my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think I'm right? And if AMD doesn't course correct dramatically and very quickly, um, they're probably just going to get pushed aside again in CPU and GPU. And realistically, they may just drop out of GPU entirely and potentially potentially just be the small fry like they were during the FX series in the uh, CPU segment if Intel can keep pricing and performance super competitive uh, to the point where they make AMD look bad. I want to know what you guys think down there. Uh, I'm not trying to hype up Intel and I'm not trying to bash on AMD. I just don't like this trend. I'd rather see three strong competitors in the GPU market. I would rather see two, <laughs> the only two strong competitors in the CPU market and I want to see them battle it out. But like I said, it, it just seems like the market has been left open for AMD to be usurped completely in both. But once again, I just want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. It's just me rambling. This is something that I, I think is going to be pretty interesting. If you guys haven't seen the Technomics podcast, Paul and I talk about this throughout most of it. Uh, I just wanted to get your guys' feedback first. That should be coming out later on this week. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.